historic Chagways National Monument today talking to two employees of the Bureau of Land Management. Could you please tell us who you are and what you do? I'm Lori Allen and I am the planner for the monument. I'm McKinney Brisky, I'm a park ranger with the monument. Thank you. We were talking about how this used to be just land and now it has become a national monument. First of all, can you tell us when that happened? Sure. In March of 2009, it was designated a national monument for the Bureau of Land Management. And so this now has a special designation for it. And Mary, you were telling me that this is something special. It's a special event. Can you tell me why? Sure. This land, um, a little over 5,000 acres, is now um, has a special designation instead of just being broad, um, public land, mm -hmm. it now, instead of just multiple use, it was designated for um, specific things such as the paleontological resources, um, the scientific and educational use, and then also for the education. And we want to conserve and enhance those resources. Um, so we might specialize more on those certain resources and um, specialize on those and reduce the multiple use of it where the rest of public land is for multiple use. Excellent. And you have a special interest in the education portion of this. Can you expand on that? Well, I think as a lot of the scientists have talked about, um, the resources of this monument, the paleontological, are a, are a resource that is being studied Mm -hmm. New discoveries are coming out, all sorts of information about the world from 280 million years ago is coming to light and we have a window into that world. Now that's special for the scientists, but it's also special for the local communities like Las Cruces, actually the nation, the world, because it's an active scientific process that's going on. They're studying these fossils, they're coming up with theories, they're testing their theories, they're creating this picture and the community of Las Cruces can be a part of that, especially the kids. Um, paleontology is something that most kids are interested in. They love the dinosaurs, they love fossils, yes. they really, you know, they connect with that. And so here's an opportunity where this park was set aside because of its fossil resources, and we can include the kids in what's happening with these science, scientists and the scientific research and we can make them a part of that and that can get them interested in science, it can get them interested in the natural world, they'll become stewards of this mm -hmm. area because it's theirs, it's their heritage that we are learning about and we're making special to them. So in, in the perspective of it, it's good for the Bureau of Land Management because we have this special area that we can get the community involved and get them to care about and it's good for the students because they can expand on what they learn in the classroom mm -hmm. out here in the trackways. A huge difference between just looking at a textbook and then the interactive aspect of it and having the availability of interacting with you know the area itself like they can come here and look at all of this work that is done it's amazing amazing thank you well i'm pat hester and um, i am the blm regional paleontologist for new mexico arizona and california so um, i um, have worked for the blm for a long time and this place is is uh, kind of a special place for the blm and it represents one of a number of areas now in the West that BLM manages for special reasons. Um, it's part of what's called the National Landscape Conservation System. Mm -hmm. And the Prehistoric Trackway National Monument is one of those units. And of course, um, the term, you know, the trackway, well, yeah, that suggests, you know, fossils or paleontological resources. So that's a key component of this unit. Uh, and there's a lot of other activities that occur out here too. But um, one of the things that the BLM is required to do or is trying to do in terms of management, it is, um, is to manage these places for conservation and preservation. Um, one way to do that is um, to encourage scientific use and uh, that's what these crazy people are doing here. <laughs> <laughs> one of the 
key components of this national landscape conservation system mm -hmm. is to use these places in, uh, for science and uh, uh, to preserve them for people to enjoy for a long time. And you know, one of the things about the rocks around here, those book layers are going to be there right. for the future, and there'll be other people that have a chance to come out and look at them and maybe find new uh, things and uh, interpret it in a new way. So uh, that's what the BLM is responsible uh, to do, uh, is mandated to do through the planning and long-term management. What would you say is the importance or impact in society of having this land becoming a, a monument instead of just letting it be? Well, you know, I grew up in the West, and one of the things that we, we always kind of are spoiled because we think we're always going to have these big open spaces. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, there are more and more of us, and we're filling up the West. And I think so preserving some of these places for special, I want to say, uses, because we still can come out here and use it, right. um, are, is a key. And, and it's a way to, you know, walk up these can you know, you walk up the canyons, you're kind of, if you're by yourself, you're kind of in another world. And if you see little tracks on the ground or little tracks in the rocks, it's just, I think it's, a, it's an, an experience that a lot of people have right now and it would be great for people to have that in the future and that's I think why it, that's important I think for for us as a society to preserve I, I absolutely agree <laughs> thank you so much for all of the work that you do and for sharing what you do and the importance of it <laughs> okay thanks thank you can I ask a question <laughs> what's the biggest challenge that you guys are facing in this particular amount well um, you know, I'm I'm not the local manager. I see that there's sometimes people um, use do certain things and continue to do certain things and have been doing things that maybe are incompatible with the, uh, the management that's going to be be um, uh, eventually be be implemented. I think that there's a big challenge with the. Um, off-road vehicle use, I think, but I think that the the office is doing great. I really think that the uh, the club, the four, you know, they're working with groups to actually uh, manage the use, and there are a lot of people that uh, like to do that, and so that's a challenge because there are people that want to continue to do that, and and but if you continue to do it everywhere, <laughs> you know, it really does have to be monitored and controlled. Or there are things that won't be here anymore. And there are things that won't be here anymore for the people that actually want to participate in that activity. So I think that's a big challenge. I think that it's a very subtle resource. It doesn't you know, hit you in the face. Mm -hmm. You have to look at the rocks a lot. You have to listen to people that have studied the rocks. And so trying to, I guess, um, in, convey that to the general public is a challenge. Uh, I, I think that it might, it'll be good. Um, and I don't know what eventually will come down, but I think having specimens in the museums, having some on-site stuff, you know, for people can look at where it's appropriate will help people. But yeah, I think basically it's just, it's a very subtle resource that not everybody sees. So, so maybe getting the public to understand and respect yes what what this is and, yeah. and the importance of it and the importance of it and you know just sitting listening to these guys talk about uh, well reading the rocks seeing the world in another time frame is is great and I was doing something up in the San Juan Basin with somebody who actually went to school at New Mexico State. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, it was always so neat to go out to those canyons and you'd see those little tracks on those rocks. I mean, this was somebody 20 years after in the San Juan Basin, mm -hmm. up in the oil and gas patch, remembering that. And so it is a real subtle thing, but it's a kind of a cool thing. You know, some things don't just always, you know, bop you on the head. You gotta use your brain a little bit. But once you see it, hey, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is discovery. Yeah.